I am for signs and wonders. Can you say it to yourself again? Let God hear you very clearly. Say it, let the devil hear you also. Not for reproach, but for signs and wonders. For signs and wonders. Not for shame. For signs and wonders. And in this midst of the year, God will be making you a sign and a wonder. Oh, that amen is not loud enough. God will be making your family a sign and a wonder. God will be making your businesses a sign and a wonder. If you believe it, shout the loudest, amen. Our teaching topic for this month all through our Sunday services is titled Commanding Signs and Wonders from the Platform of a Revival. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verses 2 to 6. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verses 2 to 6. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. God came from Tema. And the only one from Mount Para, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. And he had horns coming out of his hand. And there was, there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Hallelujah. Oh God, revive thy works in the midst of the year. That's what God is doing. It's a time of revival. It's a time of revival. A revival does not take people down, it takes people up. Revival is a celebration of divine visitation amongst God's people. In Genesis chapter 50 and verse 24, he said, God was here and I knew it not. During this season of revival, you will encounter God's visitation in the name of Jesus. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, but God will visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. God will surely visit you and bring you into this land that he has promised you. Don't forget that we're already in our promised land. When God visits, he establishes that which he has begun to do. Expect God's visitation in a strangest way this month in your life in the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 3 verses 10, 7 to 10, we saw how God visited his people in Egypt. The Lord said unto Moses, I've surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt. I've heard the cry, their cry by reason of the taskmaster. I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. That is divine visitation. And when I visit them, I will bring them up out of the land. Bring them out of the land of captivity. I will bring them into the good land, the large land, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, and Wadisites. Did you see that also? Hallelujah. If you have the Jebusites, you must have the Wadisites. I will bring them into that land. I will bring them out from the lands of affliction. From the lands of pain. From the lands of sorrow. From the experiences of failure. And I will bring them into the land that I promise. Whatever God has declared concerning you for this year. It shall be forcefully fulfilled. This miss of the year in the name of Jesus. 
The way you shout your amen determines how quick you will get your miracle. Come and shout a revival, amen. So the midst of the year is ordained. A revival season for God's people. A revival is a platform for signs and wonders. And diverse miracles amongst others. In Acts chapter 3, and if you read from verse 6, Peter, in the hour of prayer, and John, they went, and the Bible says that man by the beautiful gates began to ask them for arms. They were touched. They were revived. And Peter said unto him, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And took him by the right hand. Lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. The time of revival is a time of signs and wonders. All through this season, we are going to be encountering strange signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. All that it takes is for us to stay awake. So as to make the most of this prophetic season, stay awake. Stay awake. This is not when to sleep or slumber. I'm talking about spiritual sleep. This is not when people will be dragging you. This is not when they will be pushing you. No. Stay awake. Because it's a time of signs and wonders. In Genesis chapter 28 and verse 16, Jacob said, when he awoke out of his sleep, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew not. Listen, God has been there. The only thing was that he was asleep. God has been there. He was spiritually asleep. Some people come to church. They hear testimonies on this altar. They see what God is doing. But they can't see it in their life. People are sharing testimonies. And they even begin to ask. Excuse me, is this thing true? I was in that service now. And I didn't feel anything. He said one word came from the pastor. We are, we are all hearing the same thing. I don't know which word though. I was in that service. From the beginning to the end, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. This thing, we need to be checking. Is it true? I hope it's not that they are telling them what to say. In the midst of revival, in the midst of the move of God, he can't see it because he's asleep. As asleep. The spirit man is asleep. So he can't see any spiritual thing. He can be in church, but he's not in touch. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he's spiritually asleep. So he's active carnally. He's active carnally. He can't see spiritual things. Some people can be in church, but not blessed because their spirit man is far. People come to church for different things. So it's not just to be present that guarantees an encounter. No. It's for your spirit man to be awake. Your spirit man to be awake. Some people can come to church and start looking out for many things. He can be sitting there. He's looking at you, but his mind is not there. I've told you the story of somebody that was in church. Pastor was preaching. He was shaking his head as if the thing was sinking into his spirit. The moment they say, praise the Lord, he said 10,000. So he's in church, but the spirit man is wandering. The spirit man is far. He's far. Be spiritually awake. Be spiritually awake. Especially this revival season. Be spiritually awake. You are in church. You are in any fellowship meeting. You are in your personal time of prayer. You are going for outreach. Your spirit man is charged and burning. And expecting a miracle. 
both for the people you are going to minister to and for yourself. For yourself. Hallelujah. The Lord was here. He didn't know until he awoke from his sleep and from his slumber. You had some testimony. Somebody was in church for eight years and nothing happened. Another person came. Only three weeks. Signs and wonders. Hallelujah. It's not how long, it's how well. Oh, I've been here. See, when the foundation of this church was laid, congratulations. What do you have to show for it? That's what is important. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody can come to church only one month. It's on fire. Somebody can come to church only three months. He has won 50 souls. Somebody has been in church for 10 years and yet not even one soul. And you are harassing everybody with the number of years you have been there. It's not how long, it's how well. Away from your slumber, it is revival time. Away from your sleep, it is revival time. Let me push your neighbor and say, Awake, it is revival time. I say, Push your, are you afraid of your neighbor? Push your neighbor, say, Awake, awake. If your neighbor is trying to scare you with his eyes, tell him, Now, Pastor, say, Make I push you. Push him and say, Awake, it is revival time. Come on, give him a shout. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. You will not see shame. I say you will not see shame. Those who do not want to see shame, they do the right thing at the right time. They don't sleep when people are sowing so that they will have something to gather when it is harvest time. You do the needful when you should do it. When people are on the field, get down the field. If you don't want to beg tomorrow. Have you, any farmer who sleeps at home, when everybody is there sowing on the field, she will expect to see shame during the harvest. She will expect to beg. The same way, when people are sowing spiritual seed, be a part. Get on the field. Look for your souls. Follow them up. Get them established. Engage in kingdom advancement prayers. Those are spiritual seeds you are sowing. So that when the time of harvest of testimonies begin, you will, not be a, you will not just be an onlooker. If you don't do what you should do, when everybody is doing so, it is likely that when they begin to share their testimony, you will be, be questioning it. You will be analyzing it. That's what some people do. They're in church just to analyze everything. Analyze the testimonies. Analyze the message. Analyze everything. They analyze until they become paralyzed. Praise the name of the Lord. Every wise farmer sows when he should sow so that he can receive the harvest. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Awake. What is a revival? Number one. What is a revival? A revival is a platform for divine visitation ordained for our supernatural change of position. A revival is a platform for divine visitation ordained for our supernatural change of position. It is God's visitation that nullifies every devastation of the devil. When God steps in to any affair of your life, the devil must step out. Hallelujah. When God steps in to any situation of your life, the devil must step out. That's why we need God's visitation. Divine visitation destroys every satanic manipulations. Divine visitation. Divine visitation. No matter what reproach that is operating in your life, you don't need more than God's visitation. When God steps in, the enemy must step out. Just like 
Light does not struggle with darkness. The moment light steps in, darkness must step out. Praise the name of the Lord. So, revival is that platform that enables God to step in into your issue. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Revival, O Lord. Revive your work in the midst of the years. And then when God revives his work, when revival occurs in the life of a man, what happens? Supernatural change of position. Verses 17 to 19 of the same Habakkuk chapter 3. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the flood, and there shall be no herd in the storm. That looks like a pitiable situation, a disadvantaged position, a level of stagnation and failure. Nothing good was happening. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, my God, and in the God of my salvation. When revival hits a man, that situation changes. There is a change of position. As in verse 19, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. He was there before, defeated, frustrated, an epitome of pity. And then, when revival happens, he becomes an attraction, an epitome of envy. Praise the name of the Lord. Change of position. I prophesy to you by the power of God, before this revival season is over, your position will change in the name of Jesus. Your situation will change for the better in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout the loudest, amen. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 to 20. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. He is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rise in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of these to whom the reproach of it was about them? Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee. I will save her that hearted and gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land which thou hast been put to shame. Can you see a change of situation? And at that time I will bring again, even in the time that I will gather you, I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord, before your eyes, you will see your situation changing for good. Before your eyes, in this midst of revival, you will see those who have mocked you before, you will see them coming to bow down before you. Before your eyes, you will see people who have asked you, where is your God? You will see them following you to, to church in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout it louder, amen. What is revival? Number two, a revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in you to rise. Hallelujah. A revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in you to rise. Ezekiel chapter 37, you know the story of the dry bones. Very dry. Look as if nothing good can come from that valley of dry bones. Ezekiel look at it and affirm that these bones are really very dry. They are not only dry, they are very dry. But from this dry bone, God caused a mighty host of army to rise. Inside of you is greatness. God has packaged and programmed you for greatness. You are a solution to your generation. You are not a child of reproach. You are not a concern, but a solution. You are not a liability. You are an asset. For this giant to rise inside of you, you need a spiritual awakening because it is the spiritual that controls the physical. The dimension of greatness and success that God has programmed for you with your spiritual state now, witches and wizards will kill you if God allows it. 
So God wants you to be spiritually buoyant enough to look at any evil force and at your look alone, which is die. That when people begin to think evil, any which wants to think evil about you is gone. You need to be spiritually awake. Hallelujah. God wants that giant in you to rise. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 21, and their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near. He shall approach unto me, for who is this that engages her to approach unto me? See the law. Their nobles shall come. Governors shall emerge from the midst of them. Great people, captains of industries, great leaders in the society that will influence their world, their generation. That's you God is talking about. That's what revival does. Revival sparks up that potential. Revival sparks up that greatness. He says, when you were hated and forsaken, he said, but I will make you an eternal excellency. The joy of many generations. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 15. That's what God wants to awaken inside of you. But revival must come first. It takes spiritual awakening before the blessings can flow. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. It takes spiritual awakening for the blessings to flow. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry land. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed first. And then when I pour my spirit, that spiritual awakening, then my blessings upon thy offspring. The blessing comes after the outpouring of the spirit. It is the empowerment of the spirit that provokes the blessings. Hallelujah. Giants are about to rise. In these two months, you will be a surprise to yourself. Oh, those who are believing it are shouting the loudest amen. When can we say a revival has occurred? What are the signs of revival? When can I say revival has happened in my life? What are the signs of revival? Number one. When the heart of man begins to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom. When the heart of man begins to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom. Then we say a revival has occurred. In Psalm 41 and verse 1. Psalm 41 and verse 1, hear what the Bible says. It says, Blessed is he that, Psalm 42, verse 1, as the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Hallelujah. When man's heart begins to pant after God and his kingdom, when you become restless, Tireless pursuit after God and his kingdom. After Sunday service, you don't even feel as going. You are wishing another thing almost immediately. Praise the name of the Lord. When your heart begins to pant after God and the interests of his kingdom, that every day you wake up, your prayer is, Oh God, as I step out today, give me souls. Anyone I speak unto, Lord, draw them to your kingdom. Draw them to your kingdom. When your heart begins to pant on how to get somebody established in the faith, oh God, concerning the need of that, my new convert, Lord, provide for me so that it can be established. Hallelujah. When on a Saturday your heart is panting, oh God, for tomorrow's service, let there be massive flow into your kingdom. Let there be massive flow into your kingdom. Let there be massive flow into your kingdom. Lord, bring people from everywhere. Bring people from everywhere. Bring people from everywhere. If that is your heart, it will show even in your disposition. You have prayed that prayer. You won't, by the reason of your service, be driving people away from church. If you are truly engaged in that kind of prayer. You are praying that prayer. Your heart is pointing to see. Multitude come to church. And you are 
you, you are a member of a unit, maybe traffic, and somebody is coming. Where you want park now? No space there. No, I will puncture your tire. The person says, ah, sorry, I'm just coming for the first time. I don't know where they park. Uh -huh. If they come for the first time, you know get high. If you know park there, carry your car, go. Carry your car, go. If you go, go, go. You they hear me so? Oh, you're an usher. After you have prayed that prayer, somebody is coming and so I say, Shh, stand up there. Stand up there, my friend. He says, sorry, I'm having some health. I just want to stay near this. I say, stand up. Stand up. If you know, I will carry you on the chair now. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are prayed up prayer from the depth of your heart, you won't be a source of concern in the body of Christ. You will watch your utterance. You will watch your disposition. Anything that does not glorify God won't come from you. Because you are praying. You are praying. You are praying. You can't be building and be destroying at the same time. Praise the name of the Lord. The things of God will be running in your heart. They won't remind you from home cell. Home cell is the next house to your house. And the moment you hear them doing opening prayer, you lock your window. And then turn into the room and tell your children, oh yeah, make one they go. I won't sleep, sir. Go, go, go. If they ask me, I know they will. What do I tell? What do I talk? I know they, except, especially you, you, you. Eh? you come here, organize. Okay, you, they talk too much. I know they. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. When your heart is panting, that, that is 30 minutes to the time. No. Nobody needs to instruct you. You are out around your neighborhood there inviting people for Jesus. You know, you see, the home cell is where we come to pray and God answers prayer. God, whatever need it is, we come together. There is power and unity of prayer. That's what we we'll do. So no matter what your challenge is, that's why I'm inviting you. Because your time of testimony has come. Now, you see, you are just bubbling for Jesus. Bubbling for Jesus. Some people have been in church now for how many years? They are not in any unit. They are not in any unit. They just come and sit in one corner and be observing. Ah, I'm just observing. He has been observing five years of us. Three years. Well done, chief observer. He's in church. And then that's why he sees anything that, everything that is wrong. See, Osha. Is that how to do Osha? See that one. Wait for me, that one. Say. Protocol. <laughs> Protocol. Proto. Proto. Now, so then they do proto. He sees everything wrong because he's never involved. His heart is far. Your heart is panting after God. You know there is revival happening. Prayer time, you are there. Outreach, you are there. Home cell, you are there. Covenant hour prayer, you are there. Something is pushing you. You are restless. Even when it's not convenient, if from inside there is a push, that's revival. Once there is fire inside, the body will, will follow. Praise the name of the Lord. All this one that your wife will be waking you Sunday morning. Wake up, oh. Wake up. Time don't reach. Stand up. He said, hey. Mm. I say, no. Praise the name of God. They will push you. Push you to everything. Push you. Push you. Push you. To come to church. Your wife has to promise to do something special for you. Something is wrong. Revival is when the heart of man is panting after God and every other blessing follows. Psalm 34 and verse 10. The young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek after the Lord shall not want any good thing. When your heart is seeking after God, good things will start seeking after you. That's why time of revival is time for blessing. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. When do we say revival has occurred? When walking in the fear of God becomes our new way of life. When walking in the fear of God has become our new way of life. You are walking in the fear of God. Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 39 and 40. And I will give them one heart, one way that they may fear me forever. For the good of them 
and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their heart that they shall not depart from me. When walking in the fear of God becomes your natural lifestyle. Hallelujah. You are just living your life, walking in the fear of God, whether God is there or not. You are conscious. The fear of God. You watch what you do against God. When naturally your heart is yearning to please God, not to please men. The problem with many people, they want to please men. And at the end of the day, they, they displease God. I don't know what he will feel. I don't know what she will feel. And, well, I just need to. You know, we have been childhood friends. So they prefer to disobey God to please man. Praise the name of the Lord. When in all the steps you want to take, God becomes your priority. Will God be happy? This thing I want to do. This decision I want to take. Will it please God? Will it please God? No matter who is there, no matter who is not there. Joseph said, I fear the Lord. I can't do this evil. I can't do this evil. When anything that displeases God, naturally, you see yourself running away from it. Then the fear of God, revival has occurred in your life. Hallelujah. The fear of God. The fear of God. The fear of God. The fear of God will make you to run away from anything that will not please God. When you are walking in the fear of God, it will show how you relate with your, with your fellow brothers and sisters. You can't tell me you walk in God's fear and you are pulling down somebody. You are blackmailing people about. You are, you are trying to destroy another person because you want to go up. You can't tell me that you are, you are, you are walking, you know, the fear of God is at work in your life when you don't have respect for the church of Jesus Christ. You can't tell me that you fear God when you don't fear his word. Hallelujah. Walking in the fear of God. When you walk in the fear of God, it will, it will show how you run your business. It will show how you handle the issues of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. I tell people around me, the reason why I can't do any wickedness to anybody is not because I'm just afraid of that person. I'm afraid of God. Because the law of seed time and harvest time cannot cease. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of seed time and in some cases, it goes from one generation to another. The fear of God. When the fear of God controls your life, nobody will need to advise you on what to do. That's revival. Nobody was there when Joseph was there with Potiphar's wife. He said, I fear God. Praise the name of the Lord. What is in revival for us? What do we take in revival? Number one, every revival is a spiritual launching pad to high places. God takes us to our high places in life. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 19 to 21. Jeremiah 30, 19 to 21. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. And... Their children also shall be as a fourth time and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all them that oppress them. And verse 21, their nobles shall be of themselves. Their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is he that engages his heart to approach unto me? See, yes, the Lord. Can you see it? I will change your position. I will launch you to high places. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2 and verses 17 to 19. We were earlier read Habakkuk 3 to 17 to 19. He will take you to your high places. God has great height for us. He takes revival to get us there. Where man can't take you, God will take you. So instead of pursuing hard after man, pursue hard after God. And then God will establish that high position in the name of Jesus. Number two, every revival culminates in supernatural restoration of the redemptive dignity. Of the believer. Every revival culminates in super, supernatural restoration of the redemptive dignity 
of the believer. Whatever good thing you have lost before, in this midst of the year, in this revival period, there's going to be massive restoration. In Joel chapter 2, and verses 26 to 29, 26 to 27, Joel chapter 2, 26 to 27, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. If you read from verse 21, he say, I will restore unto you the years that the locusts warm. Fear ye not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. For I will restore to you, verse 25, the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, my great army which I sent among you. And as a result of that, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. My people shall never be ashamed. All the years you thought you have lost. Oh, you see, all your mates have gone ahead. When God stepped into your situation, divine overtaking is permitted. All the years. Oh, you are the one who thought you have lost the years. God can give you a miracle by his visitation that will catch up with 20 years of stagnation. Praise the name of the Lord. Restoration in your family. Expect it this, this month. Restoration in your businesses. Restoration in your own personal spiritual life. You used to be very, very active for Jesus before. How come you have gone into the cooler? It's time for God to restore you. You are the forefront before. Outreach, you are there. Burning hot for Jesus. How come? Your two hands are folded now and you are watching from the back. It's time for restoration. I decree restoration for you in the name of Jesus. Number three, we enjoy express answers to prayers in revival. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, I've chosen you and day you to go forth and bear fruit. That your fruit shall abide. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give unto you. Revival season is a time for speedy answers for prayer. Speedy answers. Why you are calling is answering. The church was revived in Acts chapter 12. And they were going to, you know, execute one of them, Peter. And then the church was in a revival prayer session. Instantly. The prayer was answered even quicker than they expected. They were still praying. Brethren, let's pray that the chains will be broken. Let's pray for our brother Peter. Let's pray, pray, pray. Peter was already by the door. And by the time Rhoda went there to open, he couldn't believe it can't be. It's too fast. It's too fast. By reason of the revival that is coming upon you and upon every one of us this year, that testimony that you are waiting for to share in December, you will share it before this month is over. Speedy answers to prayers. What more? Every revival empowers believers to command the supernatural. Everything concerning you this month will be reflecting the supernatural. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, I and the children that God has given unto me, we are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders. Not for reproach, not for shame. All through this month, everything concerning you will be signs and wonders. Everything concerning you will be signs and wonders. That's what revival does. It empowers believers to command the supernatural. Supernatural finances, supernatural health. You won't break down all through this month. Hallelujah. Supernatural favor. What they have never, never given to anybody in your place of work, they will give it unto you. What has never been known to happen in your family for good, it will begin for you. If you believe it, shout the loudest, Amen. Supernatural. Supernatural. Commanding the supernatural. That shall be our portion. If you believe it, shout the loudest, Amen. Therefore, awake. Thou that sleepest. It is revival time. Revival time is work time. Revival time is work time. Where you go engaging in spiritual things. Going all out ravaging every corner. To bring in souls to Jesus. Getting them established. Believing God to stand in meeting. The needs as God will enable you to. Pray in kingdom advancement prayers. Passionate about drive for kingdom things. That before it is called, you're already there. God having access to everything you have. Your strengths, your internet, your intellects, your finances. 
your skills, everything about you, just driving, driving, driving towards the kingdom of God. That is what we call a revival. And when it happens, expect the blessings in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Well, it's our covenant day of healing and deliverance. They brought everyone that was sick unto him. And everyone that was possessed with devils, whether physical sickness, medically explained sicknesses, or spiritual ones, diabolic ones, satanic manipulations, those vexed with spirit. The Bible says, he healed them all. So whatever may be the source of any affliction in your life this morning, expect a divine touch in the name of Jesus. The word of God is the bomb. In Gilead. In Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 20 to 22, the word is referred to as the bomb in Gilead. The harvest is past. The summer is gone. He said, yet we are not saved. For the heart of the daughters of my poor are my heart, and black astonishment has taken over me. But there is a bomb in Gilead. That is, there's a physician there. Why then is not the health of the daughters of my people recovered? There's a bomb. The word of God is the balm in Gilead. The word of God is a tool for your healing and deliverance. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what happened? Healing all manner of sickness and all manners of disease among the people. All manner. All ma no matter what name they call that sickness. Today I speak by the authority of God's word. You are receiving your healing in the name of Jesus. All manner, no matter what name. Don't be frightened by the name I told you. Medical names are always terrifying and frightening. They will drag the name so that they can collect plenty money from you. Small thing, they will drag the name. Check the medical name. Acute hyperlotorosis. Praise the name of the Lord. Even before they call the name, even if you don't have fever, one other fever has hit. Praise the name of the Lord. No matter what manner, no matter the manner, I speak by the authority of God. He sent forth his word, his word, he them and delivered them. I command your healing Lord in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's word. What is the effect of God's word? The, number one, the word of God kills. That is, the word of God is medicinal. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. The word of God kills. Whatever they say it is, the word of God is a cure. A cure to that sickness. It kills. Luke 5, 17. As he was teaching, the word of God was, the power of God was present to heal the word of God. Just take it raw. Raw and you will take all the power. Number two, the word of God repairs. Should in case they say there is a damaged part of your system, the word of God is creative. In Genesis chapter 1, you know the story of the creation? The word of God. God said and God saw. God said and God saw. Any part of any organ in your body that says, doctors have said is damaged. By this word this morning, I command the creative power of God in the name of Jesus. The word of God creates. It creates. What's more? The word of God delivers. That is to say, the word of God liberates. The word of God liberates. It liberates even if it is satanic forces. Luke chapter 3, 13 and verses 11 to 12 to 16. You know the story of that woman bowed down. Satan has menaced her life. In verse 16, Jesus God, they ought not this daughter of Zion, ought whom Satan has bound this year, be set loose. No, Satan has kept her for too long. She was bowed down. She could not look up. Everything about her life was reproach. Jesus said, she will be set loose today. John chapter 1 and verse 5. The light, God's word is light. And Satan's manipulation is darkness. When light enters, darkness must give way. Hallelujah. No matter the arrows of the enemy that have been shot against you, that is the cause of that affliction. Today, I command it to be returned back to sender in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And lastly, 
The word of God is surgical. The word of God is surgical. They have told you you needed operation. After this miracle prayer today, you will go back and they say it is cleared in the name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 2 verses 21 to 22, you know the story. When God was creating Eve out of Adam, he caused a deep sleep. So God was a first surgeon. He gave Adam anesthesia and then confirm all the operation, finish up all the operation and then Eve came suddenly. Hallelujah. That's what the word of God does. It is what carries out operation in any part of your system without any flow of blood. Without any pain. Hallelujah. Whatever area of your life that medically they say requires an operation. I command this supernatural operation now in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, shout the loudest. Amen. It is surgical and it will be corrected. God's word is power. God's word is power. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. When he spake unto me, his spirit entered into me. If you are facing some satanic forces, spiritual problems, it is spirit against spirit. God's word is spirit. By the entrance of this world, I command that negative spirit of affliction, of mental disorder, of any kind of manipulation to be silenced now in the name of Jesus. By this word, receive a healing touch in your life now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Every satanic affliction menacing your destiny. I cause it to the root now in the name of Jesus. Whatever my father has not planted in your body that has been ravaging your any part of your body, I command it to be uprooted now. He sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from every oppression of the devil, every satanic oppression, I command your liberty now in the name of Jesus. I decree every form of sickness, whatever name it is called, I command it destroyed now in the name of Jesus. My grain is healed now. I problem is healed now. That pain on your neck is gone now. That toothache is disappearing now. That backache leaves you now. Romanticism is caused now. High blood pressure is caused now. Low blood pressure is caused now. That fibroid dissolves now. Infertility is caused now. Every internal organ that is malfunctioning, I command a touch now. Whatever sickness that they have said you need an operation, I command a divine touch now. A divine healing now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever issue that is not working, whatever organ that is not working in your life, begins to work normally now in the name of Jesus. Every sickness you saw before, you shall see them no more. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The things you couldn't do before, begin to do them now. Begin to shake that part of your body. Something has happened for you. Something has happened for you. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we are praying before you get home today you will discover that thing you saw before you shall see them no more i decree every day we usher you to new testimonies your health will recover speedily this week in the name of jesus you will have amazing testimonies this week in the name of jesus i decree the god of our fathers goes with you every door you touch will open for you in the name of Jesus, be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, 
Expect turn around to become your new identity from henceforth. And let everyone shout a revive. Amen and amen.